Yo, what is going on, you hot dog water hunter? Back at it with the coolest Mondays. I think we're going to call it coolists, uh, Mondays until I come up with a better name. It's okay, but I think we could, I think I could do better. So yeah, coolest Mondays. Uh, the two lists we're going to be taking a look at today is Simon Trottier's Mewtwo Urshifu deck. Um, I already made a video on this, so if you want to go check that out with some gameplay, you can, uh, right, right here, um, go ahead and give that a click. Uh, but if you want to watch this first and let me and hear me go a little bit more in depth on the list uh and like my, my full thoughts on why i think it uh is a good deck solid deck decent deck whatever um go ahead stick around uh, and then the other list we're gonna take a look at is sanders senna scorch energy denial control type deck which i think is really cool i haven't played any games with it but i already have some thoughts on the list um and i'll go a little bit more in depth on to uh you know how the deck runs and stuff like that so let's get into the first list here it's simon trottier's mewtwo psychic mewtwo slash urshifu deck um so it's got it's basically two decks in one when you take an initial look at it um and it's very heavy the big thing that stood out to me initially is there's two gengar and mimikyu so it definitely makes it seem like the initial strategy here wants to be to use that the whorehouse gx to give yourself kind of like an extra turn to set up um and plan out you know the way you want to start being aggressive and give really give you the chance to be the first person to be aggressive which i do kind of like and the biggest thing i was like kind of unsure about is do you want to go first in this deck or do you want to go second because if you go first you can go attach pass attach house for the full effect you know you force your opponent to draw the cards and you go to poltergeist from there you also have the option to go into the gale thrust turn two before your opponent or even a g-max rapid flow um, so I think going first with this deck overall is definitely the way you want to go about it. If you play against some kind of welder decks, like a green Zard or something, you definitely want to go second. Um, so those are, there are some matchups out there where I think you do want to go second, but I think generally going first is going to be the route you want to go. And you don't really star search. I feel like too often you go first, attach next turn, uh, house. If you go second, maybe you star search, maybe you house for one, uh, it depends on the situation. I think for sure, you probably don't want to attach your Urshifu on your first turn, unless you're using straight for some significant amount of damage or even a ko up against something like a, a bottle b and a mad party so something like that i guess you'd want to strafe off the start that'd be fine um <clears throat> but yeah there's unlike the the full psychic mewtwo deck there's, you don't have as many options for attackers you don't have you know the reshis are the bio plume the incineroar there's so many cards you just don't play in here because you have to make room for the urshifu and its energy so you have gengar mimikyu uh, you have the Tina Chomp and you have Trevor. And I think other stuff could be added in here for sure. And I actually have Latios as well, which is really in here. Uh, it's good against Pikaram. Um, it was extremely good against Luke Metal. I think that's the main matchup uh, where you're gonna get the most value is the is uh, the Luke Metal matchup. However, I feel like for this deck, the Luke Metal matchup gets quite a bit tougher than something like the uh, the the full build of the Mewtwo deck because you don't play uh, you don't play uh what's it called outrage you don't play rushy sword which is a huge key card in the luke metal matchup because if you gx attack with the the latios and they hit you with a station with a braid blade you can return with outrage to just get a knockout on them pretty easily most of the time the only way you can't is if you have no horror energy on your mewtwo they hit you with braid blade um then outrage will only do to do 260 if they have a cape of toughness um, and if they GX attack first, this is like another reason the Luke Metal matchup for this build specifically probably isn't that great. Because if they GX attack first with the Luke Metal to, uh, you know, get the damage reduction before you're able to use Clear Vision, <clears throat> you don't really have a GX attack to take advantage of at that point. Like, you don't have a great GX attack anymore. You could build them to Miraculous Duo, which could be fine. Uh, GG End can come up and be fine. Removing like three energy from play is good. You don't get the prize cards, which is, uh, you know, not great. Uh, and then pale moon gx i guess pale moon gx might just be a better gg end at that point um so you have pale moon gx it removes the energy but they'll probably have a switch to remove the effect of them getting knocked out so once again you're not getting prize cards you're really kind of just removing the energy from play whereas in the other build of the mutator kid like incineroar gx attack which is super effective uh against luke metal specifically super strong against luke metal so losing that you don't really have a great gx option if they go to if they go for like that latios or that luke metal gx attack for one which they'll probably have to go for if uh you know if like if you're going second uh on your first turn you can probably pull off a clear vision before they can luke metal so you'll both want to choose to go second and try and get your gx attack off but if they just choose to go second they should be able to get off a turn uh it wouldn't be that difficult for them to go off a turn one luke metal gx attack and you know just reduce the damage before you get to clear vision get that damage reduction in there um and then you don't have a good gx attack to kind of be like okay you rushed your gx attack you don't get to remove my energy from play but now i don't have a great gx attack to follow up on so the luke metal matchup i can see for this deck being pretty iffy also because like with even with the addition of urshifu having all this other urshifu stuff in the deck that doesn't 
Urshifu is not good against Luke Metal. <laughs> it just isn't, right? That's one of the reasons Rapid Strike is not doing so great right now. A lot of Luke Metal running around. So uh, it's not like, oh, I have this, but I have this tier two, two this tier two Urshifu to, to fall back on. It's like, well, it's not really that good. Especially if they just go down the route of using Zamazenta, which they can do. They can just use Zamazenta. Urshifu can't hit it. And then you only have special energy on your Mewtwo. So those all will get removed through Zamazenta's attack. Um, and they can just kind of sit there and try and run you out of energy, to be honest. Like, you only have eight energy to put on your Mewtwo. And then the Rapid Strike energy, which can only be put on the Urshifu, um, which can only be put on the Urshifu, uh, you know, Urshifu can't hit your Zam the Zamazenta. So, um, Luke Mana will definitely give this deck trouble, I think, overall. But you don't have to be able to beat everything. But I think it is such a popular deck right now that that's definitely one of the uh, reasons to not consider this deck overall in the, in the meta right now. So more strengths of the deck overall, though, is like some of the decks that Mewtwo kind of struggled with is like Picarom, Crushing Hammer. Energy removal in general is really tough for the Mewtwo deck to deal with. So stuff like Picarom is really annoying. But when you have like a one energy attacker in something like the Urshifu with that Gale Thrust, um, you attach energy, you attack. So even if it gets removed next turn, you can still once again go like switch to the bench, bring it back to the active, switch to your other Urshifu, bring that up, Gale Thrust again. Um, and even if they got their own Mewtwo's out, so you're not being able to be able to take advantage of the weakness on the Picarom or the right Urshifu, you're still doing something as opposed to just getting all your energy crushing hammer away having them play around poltergeist and then you only attack as poltergeist or star search um and if they're playing around the poltergeist by playing down their trainer cards you're not doing damage um at all anyways <laughs> and star search is only getting another energy into play for them to then crushing hammer or even if they don't have a crushing hammer or a yell grunt just attack and get ahead on the damage and the prize exchange in general so great to have the urshifu in here for the pikaram matchup not just because pikaram and raichu raichu and bolton and all their other support will go on besides aldegas is weak to fighting besides the mewtwo's of course but because it gives you an attacker that is efficient into decks that play crushing hammer which the biggest one right now is that pikaram so that's super good uh it's just super good for that on top of also being like well if you can't get your mewtwo's out um or like if you don't put your jirachi in play and you're like all right i'm just gonna sit here with my mewtwo with an energy and like constantly threaten poltergeist you know until they remove that energy uh so if you ever just bench the mewtwo and you have three trainers in your hand i can just knock it out i'm sure they could play around at that point but you could even build up into like a night watch and be like if the mewtwo comes down i'm knocking it out because pikram does not play their own jirachi gx they don't play it you know they don't play it um so you don't have to be worried about that you have to be like you, i know you don't have jirachi gx in there i'm not scared of it if i don't put mine in play your mewtwo is weak to my mewtwo and my mewtwo set up first so you can get to those kind of scenarios with this deck up against pikram as well and be like my mewtwo's are ready to go um, I'm not benching Jirachi, and then I have Urshifu on the back line. So if you go into Pikarama Raichu, um, I just get a one-hit KO on that anyways. Um, so definitely uh, kind of shores up that kind of weakness of the Mewtwo deck. Also up against Eternatus, kind of the similar story where it's like Mewtwo decks, not, not like a similar reason why you're bad against, but Eternatus is really, really good against Mewtwo decks. But it's not that good against Urshifu Rapid Strike. And with all the Eternatus decks pretty much cutting their weakness card energy or, or basically cutting all their weakness card energies, uh, yeah, Eternatus or Urshifu loves that. So they can just hit them really hard, you know, and give you really a good chance uh, against the Eternatus matchup. Whereas before, I think you were probably just losing it pretty much every time. Especially with a list like this with no big charm uh, and no real gimmicks. Um, so it's pulling off, you really heavily rely on the Urshifu. Um, but yeah, the Mewtwo, the Mewtwo deck struggled against Eternatus very much. Uh, in general, especially with them playing Crushing Hammers as well. They played Crushing Hammers as well, or have been playing Crushing Hammers. But now that there's this Urshifu line in here, you have a good chance against the Eternatus. So it shores up a lot of the weaknesses of the Mewtwo deck uh, in that regard. And then on the flip side of that, uh, if you look at this as more of an Urshifu deck with a Mewtwo package in it, which I kind of think about it the other way, but you could look at it that way as well. The Mewtwo shores up a lot of weaknesses of like what a normal straightforward Urshifu deck would have. Um, your, your Luke Metal matchup is better. Like I said, it still feels like this is list specifically is kind of tough against Luke Metal, but your matchup's better um, as like an Urshifu deck to have all this Mewtwo stuff in here. Your, your Luke Metal matchup gets way better here. Um, having all of this Mewtwo stuff in the deck, it actually makes your matchup so much better. So that's like a plus right there, right? So got the Mewtwo stuff in here. That's a plus. Uh, all of a sudden, if, it, if this was just like a straightforward Urshifu deck, you're just losing to Luke Metal pretty much every single time. Um, but you got this Mewtwo stuff in here and all of a sudden it's like, well, uh... I guess we can uh I guess we can put up a fight against the Luke Metals now, right? So the flip side of it, thinking about almost like an Urshifu deck, now you can shore up the weaknesses of Urshifu. Uh, and you still have the Urshifu in there as well to be able to utilize if you ever want to utilize it throughout the game. But um now you got all this Mewtwo stuff in here to help uh that much better in those matchups. Also up against other 
uh like the big mewtwo decks you have your own mewtwo's to work with which can be a big deal especially like early horror house plays to kind of just be like i'm not putting my draw in play horror house boss your mewtwo knock it out with poltergeist on the second turn you can do those kind of plays which can be super impactful in games um so it gives you a lot of room to kind of cheese your way to such an early advantage that your opponent can't really recover through the gengar and mimic you and i feel like that's like a lot of what this deck is and i say cheese but it is still pretty consistent about it and that's why there is two gengar and mimic in here so you can consistently try and do those plays to get those big early advantages um through the house through the poltergeist um and take advantage of those but yeah this like helps like if they, once again thinking about it, like an urshifu deck um going up against other mewtwo decks just having your own other attackers in there that are like better to have around than urshifu you know otherwise what some of those Mewtwo decks would try and do, like the Psychic Mewtwo, or even the, um, oh, what's the other one called? The Psychic Mewtwo, or the Rhythm Blue Mewtwo, is they would just try and focus down the Jirachi, and then once the, the Urshifu deck doesn't have Jirachi to rely on, they would use their Mewtwo and then knock out the Urshifu. But now with you, you having your own Mewtwo in there, you have way more options to work around. Um, like I said, get a, getting ahead with that Poltergeist Horror House is really nice as well. So flip side it's kind of like the both decks are matched together and cover the weaknesses of the other ones pretty well overall so that's like another cool thing interaction with the deck so some things that i feel a little bit sketchy about the list is definitely like the lack of draw support uh only four marnie to research so only so pretty light on draw supporters from what we normally see in decks i mean there's still the two Dene, one crobat and plenty of outs to those as well with the three cherish ball uh four quick and then two um, and there is like a small tag call engine so sometimes you won't be playing a draw support you'll be using the malana or the guzman hall and guzman hall is super powerful in a deck like this it's your tool card or you have a lot of very impactful tool cards here in like the stealthy hood the karate belt air balloon and then getting your energy for the turn which you have some very situational energy um so be able to find those uh when you need them or just needing an energy specific energy if you want that rapid strike energy or if you just want an energy from mewtwo you only play eight energy that can go on mewtwo that's, that's not a very high count of energy so make sure you can find that can be a very big deal so guzman hala super powerful card in this deck um and then two swell in here got to keep the power plants out and you want to keep the hearts back if you can but the biggest thing is the power plants overall keep those out of play you don't want to lose to a power plant um and then one reset stamp in here for a little bit of late game um late game comeback tag calls of course can also find your tag team pokemon so very helpful to find your mewtwo and then you know the attackers you use through mewtwo or sometimes you'll even set up you know the trevnor or the gengar and mimikyu probably the one the most likely to get set up is the gengar and mimikyu um by itself because you plan just to go house into poltergeist and you can't find the mewtwo but you have this you can still do that through the gengar and mimikyu but after that that's where it starts to fall off once your opponent gains control of their hand again is where having all that energy on the gengar and mimikyu is so much worse than having it on a mewtwo because like you do your house you trap their hand you use your first poltergeist at, after you've trapped their hand so they can't do anything about it but then after that turn they gain control of their hand again and can kind of move stuff around so having the energy on mewtwo is so much better than having it on gengar and mimikyu but it's like a last ditch resort effort whatever Throwing on the Gengar Mimikyu is not the end of the world. Um, I really like the Karate Bell in here. Um, I kind of like just mentioned it, but I really like the Karate Bell in here because I feel like you don't really play that much energy. Um, and it's all special energy. There's a lot of ways to remove special energy right now. Uh, Giratina, Fan, uh, I mean, Crushing Hammers, of course, but Crushing Hammers can remove any energy. So having like just that extra energy excel that your opponent can't really interact with is super strong. Super strong for those late game scenarios where you can just be like Belt, Rapid Strike, uh, G Max Rapid Flow start to clean stuff up so karate belt super powerful i feel like in a deck like this uh, to give you that extra line of options uh towards the late game um but overall i really like the deck like i mentioned um and i think i've covered pretty much everything i want to cover um and yeah i don't know how this really fits overall i don't know if like the straight psychic mewtwo is just better uh overall as a deck but um this is definitely something to look at and play around with and it definitely seems interesting like i said a lot going on in the deck but it definitely seems to cover the weaknesses of each of the decks that each deck kind of had separately the psychic mewtwo build and the rapid strike straightforward rap, rap, rapid strike urshifu build as well have combining them covers the weaknesses of each of them a little bit um which makes both of them a little bit stronger and just having a ton of powerful options in a deck is never really a bad thing like these are all powerful pokemon with powerful attacks and as long as you can consistently utilize them throughout games um and the the inconsistencies that don't catch up to the deck too much um just more options is more powerful options is usually just kind of a good thing that's why stuff like urshifu dragapult is also just kind of a solid deck because there's just two powerful pokemon in a deck both their options are really good so as long as you can consistently utilize both you're doing well right um but that is the problem sometimes with decks like that and decks like this how often can you consistently utilize them and sometimes it kind of catches up to you and you just you know you draw your rapid track energy instead of an energy to attach your mutant and you're like well i don't i don't want to attack with urshifu this turn um or you draw the horror energy when you need a rapid strike or an aurora for your urshifu and so on stuff like that because you're playing 
lower counts of stuff to try and fit everything into the deck but overall it's a very cool creation and uh, definitely recommend you guys checking it out um, and I'll have an opinion later on eventually about whether I think this is better than Psychic Mewtwo or Psychic Mewtwo is just the way to go okay let's get in to the second deck we talked about that one for a little while the next one is Sanders Senna Scorch control uh memory capsule deck so you Senna Scorch is the main attacker Central VMAX is the main attacker, but the main attack you use the most is actually radiating heat through the memory capsule. Memory capsule says you can use the attacks of your previous evolutions. Uh, so you, you evolve to the VMAX, you put the memory capsule on it, you attach a fire energy, and then you use radiating heat through the VMAX. To have that extra HP, you're not getting KO'd. Uh, you hit them, you remove their energy, and then they hit you, and then you Cheryl, you attach an energy, and you repeat. Um, now, the engine in here is a really cool engine, um, and Sander even said that he kind of took this from pedro's snorlax v max deck and was like hmm, that's a cool engine i want to i want to try that out with the center scorch deck he got the the pidgeotto snorlax uh munchlax with some scoop up net squad in here as well um and then you just kind of try and set up your pidgeotto's through the level balls um like i said list or uh engine exactly like uh pedro's snorlax v max engine um and then you just set the the birds up that's your draw engine you get a center scorch v max online um and you got the early draw power through the Snorlax, which I think is a super underrated card overall. I guess not that many decks can play the Snorlax, but I think Gourmand is a super powerful way to just kind of draw cards. Especially when a lot of decks these uh, can't KO the Snorlax immediately. Even if they Marnie you, you potentially get just like another turn to Gourmandize again. And even if they Marnie you, those are new cards you're still seeing. So you can play down some of those, maybe play a draw supporter out of that Marnie that they marnie you into. Um, and then you just Gourmandize again. You're like, well, I'm just going to right, draw some more cards, I guess, then. Here we go. And you just keep doing that until they KO. And then you're like, all right, hopefully at that point you've set up enough. Or maybe you have to go into like the second Snorlax, which is like the worst case scenario is you have to go into second Snorlax. But um, uh, maybe you don't have to, right? Maybe you don't have to. So um, yeah, deck is super cool. The deck is super cool. So it's an energy denial deck. And Sander actually got top four, I believe, in the Sunday Open over the weekend uh, with it, this list. I know he placed top four in a tournament. I'm pretty sure it was the Sunday Open. Um, don't quote me on that. But yeah, so that's it. You set up the Pidgeotto, set up the Center Scorch, and then the rest of it we got, we got three Crushing Hammer, which is like, three Crushing Hammer feels really bad. Because <laughs> like, I don't know, three Crushing Hammer feels really bad. <laughs> like, why? Is that, like, where's the fourth? I almost theory, I almost theorizing like maybe you could go with less Crushing Hammer. Um, and my initial thought was maybe Yell Grunt, but I feel like you have to probably play Cheryl every turn. So it probably doesn't work out like in my head, like I think it would. So I would think I would want a fourth Crushing Hammer in here. And then I think I would want more boss in here because a, a kind of a play that can be kind of made from your opponent is they're just like, hey, if I put my active in, if I put, if I attach to my active or put whatever I plan to attack within my active, they can just, you know, kind of radiate in heat again. Um, but they're not doing that much damage. They're, they don't play welder. Um, so I'm just gonna attach to my bench and pass. And then you're like, that's a pretty good play i'll hit your active for like 120 and you're like that's what i thought you'd do um because you only have one boss in here um and sure once you find it you can loop it with mewtwo and the pal pad and all that but being able to like chase your opponent's energy it feels like it's probably going to be pretty important so i think a second boss would be like the first thing i look to add i haven't looked at the list enough to know exactly what i cut but fourth question hammer and second boss um are the first two cards i would look at adding to um give yourself more access to your opponent's energy like if they have and it might not even be that they're not even attacking but you'd rather remove energy off something off the bench and they're not wanting KOing you um but really just to make sure they can't hide their energy and slowly build up into an attacker I think is the main thing the main reason you'd want a second boss in here because otherwise yeah they can just kind of sit there and be like all right you wiped out my first attackers of energy I'm just gonna chill I'm gonna wait especially up against like an ADP station like if they go um you know if you go you know they go GX attack with ADP and then you're like all right uh Radiant Heat, Crushing Hammerheads, remove the energy from the ADP, and they're like, all right, attach to my bench station, uh, Intrepid Sword. And you're like, well, I don't want them to sit there until they can Brave Blade me, or the even worse, maybe they go try and set up another ADP on the bench, or they switch their active ADP into a Crobat. They got a Crobat in their active now, the ADP's on the bench, they're like, I want to Ultimate Right, attach to my ADP, pass. And then next turn they go, attach, E-Switch, uh, Ultimate Ray, set up a bunch of energy on some Zations, and they hit you um, with the Ultimate Ray put a bunch of pressure on you but if you could have boss them the turn before that's that much better right so i think second boss would be a great addition and maybe that just maybe you don't find room for the force crushing hammer but second boss over something like um i don't know cut maybe a level wall would be the cut to go to um i like the fire crystals you want to keep around that recovers your energy to continuously radiate in heat you want to keep the 4-4 pidgeotto of course your early game draw engine in the snorlax you want to keep you can't cut a center scorch you got to keep the 2-2 two -two center scorch the munchlax is there for like infinite resources um which if i tested the deck i might like or might dislike i haven't played any games with the deck yet <clears throat> i understand how it works 
just want to get that knowledge over across you guys. There's one Crobat in here, which you never want to put in play. And if you look at Pedro's Snorlax VMAX deck, it had the same idea of like never wanting to put a multi prize Pokemon in play that would stay this low HP because the Center Scorch Reaction is a 320. If they can one hit KO you, all right, you probably lose. If they can't, though, probably in a good spot. Um, <clears throat> so the Crobat. I would definitely be like, maybe we could just cut the Crobat and be like, it's a little bit riskier, right? Because now all of a sudden we're fully relying on Snorlax early on, but we got plenty of outs to Snorlax and the Quick Balls and the Comms. Um, and then we have plenty of retreat options because most of our stuff has one retreat cost. So we can just go attach or treat it into the Snorlax on the first round. We don't mind losing that energy. Um, one of the things that was kind of a little bit awkward in the, like, the Snorlax VMAX deck with this engine was like, we only played triple celebration energy and not that many switch cards there was nets and there was uh two switch but uh one u-turn board as well but it could be hard to get into Snorlax on the turn one because there was only triple triple acceleration energy in that build um but it's way easier to get into Snorlax in this kind of deck because we have these fire energy and most of our pokemon has one retreat cost all the pidgeys mimikyu mew yurtina munchlax has free retreat cost if we open Santa scorch or mewtwo that's only where it gets rough but still have nets for that and i mean though if we open the center scorch we're probably stuck with the center scorch i'm not gonna lie there's one switch in here so it's gonna be hard to get that maybe you open the bird keeper though right um but yeah i could definitely see cutting maybe the crowbat i think that's what i would cut cut the crowbat put a boss in play because it enters those situations where it's like okay you'll have those games um and this is basically the way that i think about this when i'm trying to avoid putting something like a two prize pokemon in play in the deck that i'm playing you'll have you'll have the, the crowbat and you'll be like okay so i'm currently dead drawing I can go get my Crobat and I put the Crobat in play. But what percentage of those games do you just lose because there's now a Crobat in play? If it's super high, then there's probably no reason to play the Crobat. And that's something you have to kind of figure out through testing the deck where it's like, well, I put the Crobat in play. I'm able to play the game. Even if you're able to play the game, doesn't mean you're going to win the game, right? So let's say, uh, you know, all the percent of games where you need to get Crobat and you need to put it in play uh, to play the game, as opposed to just sitting there dead drawing, hoping to top deck versus and also just losing the game. <clears throat> You maybe just lose most of those games anyways so then at that point it's maybe just not worth it to play the crowbat because you'll also have those games where you just open crowbat and you'll lose those games because you open crowbat you never wanted to put it in play you didn't want to see it for the whole game you didn't need it but you opened it and it's like ah that stinks so i think my cut would be the crowbat here i'd cut the crowbat for another boss um and the other thing i'm not a huge fan of is the sonya now, it is pretty multi-purpose though because it can find not only basics early on which can be great it can find basics in the mid game as well the thing is cheryl is such a big supporter that we have to like play throughout the games every time we get hit we pretty much have to Cheryl or remove enough of their energy in play that we know we won't get one hit KO'd back anyways or they won't be able to like two hit KO us um so the song is still some, uh, something that I'm looking definitely looking at and being like how much space is there actually plays and also like later in the game we can search out the fire energy which then allows us to use Raiden heat but like I'm just like kind of like how much how much can we actually play this card like how much can we actually play sonya is it worth keeping so once again i'd have to play around the deck a little bit but i feel like sonya can maybe be cut um i would i would think fourth cheryl cheryl just seems so important in a deck like this getting marnie plus hits we just want to we want to have cheryl around to be able to be like okay uh we got cheryl <laughs> so maximizing cheryl seems really good in here or maybe just another out to pokemon just setting up our pidgeys that much faster uh could help us you know find all the cards we need to find because there's a quite a few cards that we do need to kind of combo together to get going you need to get the vmax out there you need to get the memory capsule on it uh gotta start finding energy which isn't too difficult and then we have to find cheryl so you know heal our center scorch as we start going through the motions of removing our opponent's energy and so on so you definitely see uh the sonya getting cut because it doesn't seem like it's that consistently effective throughout games but once again haven't played a whole ton of games with the deck or zero games with the deck so um definitely a card that i would want to try out the crowbat i'm a little bit more leaning towards wanting to cut and i think i would cut that um for the boss because it just feels like you know the games that you're gonna put the crowbat in play you're gonna be losing some of those because the crowbat's in play also it just being a really really bad starter um kind of hurts the idea of me wanting to play it but uh you will once you will once in a, win some of those games where you need to put crowbat in play to play the game uh it's just kind of like what percent of those games are you actually winning because if we're losing 80 percent of the games we put crowbat in play anyways crowbat's probably not worth playing because it's like we're playing those games it would be better just kind of hope to top it just be like all right take this turn off maybe our opponent dead draws on their turn um because that happens sometimes i've won so many games because i'm like well i open up dead i'm like well that stinks i guess i lose and then i pass and my opponent's like well i opened up dead all right pass back to you and then i top deck and then i'm back in the game so just try and play towards that i guess and the rest of the deck uh not too much to talk about i don't think got the reset stamps in there like i mentioned for control you got some marnies in here for some kind of draw power you got a bird keeper in here as well uh it gives us like infinite pivot theoretically 
um, or, or a pivot we can like get back and reuse through the pal pad or the Mewtwo. Um, so they can't really trap anything in the active for too long while they try and, you know, set up or set up some kind of play. So the bird keeper is big in there. Ordinary Rod to recover any Pokemon that our opponent focuses down. Mew specifically is going to be a big one up against like a Rapid Strike deck or anything that's trying to snipe. Even like a Picarom could uh, be like, all right, bring up your Mew, knock it out so I can use Tag Ball, stuff like that. Um, and they have Munchlax, like I mentioned, for infinite resources. Uh, if you get in one of those situations where you have a lot of time to use or like you need to get an, a resource back to close out a game or something the munchlax is in there to kind of, in there to kind of give you those infinite resources <clears throat> um uh tool scrapper is in here probably mostly for stealthy hood is from what i can like think about i guess it could be good against luke metal to remove their tool cards plus then you can use uh giratina to remove the coding energy and then for two energy you can one hit chaosations so up against luke metal i can see the tool scrapper being a big deal as well i guess um so that one luke metal but i feel like you can maybe just beat them by running them out of energy as well i of course once i said like haven't played the matches but tool scrapper good against luke metal definitely good against hoods so you're mimic you sticks i can definitely see that being a very good reason very strong reason for wanting to keep the tool scrapper in the deck uh, and then a doll very nice to just have as a pivot to work with sometimes or um you know something to stall for a turn um, it doesn't quite get the utility as it like i keep, keep comparing this deck to the stonax v max deck because the engine is so similar but the, the doesn't get quite get the same amount of utility as it does in that deck so doll is something i could definitely see cutting uh, but it's always nice to, in these kind of decks to have something you can send up that just doesn't give a prize card sometimes to kind of you know create time for yourself um and then also you know you can always put it under the deck back into the deck to create bench space for yourself again once again uh, the one switch in here something a little bit more aggressive of a mobility card besides just the bird keeper is nice so that's why the switch is here uh, and then pal pad to kind of loop supporters and also works very well with munch lag so we uh, use pal pad get back to supporters and then when we go snack search we don't get back a supporter if we need a supporter we get back pal pad so we can have more resources unless we specifically only need a supporter like if we just need a boss then we'd probably snack search for the boss just so the boss is in there so we don't have to pal pad for the boss and then refine the boss unless we basically have no deck left then we could go pal pad put the boss back pidgeotto for it. but if that's all we need to definitely win the game then it's best to just kind of put that back but if we're just looking for as much resources as possible throughout a game then pal pad recovery off the snack search is always pretty much the way to go and yeah that's the list super like i said super cool list super cool alternate win condition deck coming here from sander which are most of sander's decks so it's always cool to see something different from him um and yeah it's always such a uh big such a big brain behind <laughs> so many decks is yeah just sander's really good player check out all the decks that he makes but yeah really cool deck definitely recommend you guys try it out. if you're looking for to play a deck alternate win condition deck your goal is not to draw six prize cards as fast as possible you will end up drawing six prize cards or your opponent will concede because they run out of energy most games um, but yeah, the deck does draw six prize cards eventually, but that's not the main goal of the deck. The main goal of the deck is to put your, your opponent in a position where they just can't win the game anymore. And then you start drawing your prize cards. So yeah, super cool deck. Um, and yeah, those are the changes that I think I'd make. I'd cut the Crobat just cause I, I feel like Crobat in decks like this just always is more of a liability than not. And then second boss, second boss, I think is the go-to card that I would want just because wanting to like chase more aggressively, make sure you can chase the, your opponent's stuff. You don't want to prize your boss if it's just one of. Um, and just being able to find it that much sooner is that big of a deal as well so make sure you can pressure their energy no matter where they're putting it be able to boss it up and radiant heat it and um yeah so those are the two lists i'm talking about today on cool lists monday until i come up with a better name but cool list is what it's going to stay with sanders senna scorch v max and uh simon's urshifu mewtwo anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll uh, see you tomorrow